In the final part of our lecture series, let's discuss hierarchical equal risk contribution algorithm, which modifies uh, hierarchical risk parity algorithm. So, as we have previously discussed, during recursive dissection in HRP, the weights trickle down the tree until all the assets at the bottommost level are assigned to respective weights. The problem here is that HRP does not stay true to the dendrogram structure, and instead it chooses to bisect the tree based on, on the number of assets. So there's some kind of a problem which arises in HRP because on each step, it uh, just bisects uh, our uh, tree structure, and as a result, it does not follow the, uh, true, uh, the, the, the true form of dendrogram. So for example, if, well, I don't know, like four or five assets form a quite distant and um, distant cluster, the HRP algorithm won't um, uh, act as if it is one cluster, but would rather will split this cluster into two, uh, into two assets. So that's why Herc algorithm was invented. So also while variance is a very simple and popular representation of risk uh, used in, in the invested world, it can underestimate the true risk of a portfolio, which is why there are many other important risk matrix used by investment managers that, that can try to, uh, try to ascertain the true risk of a portfolio asset. So the second thing which Herc modifies uh, the recursive dissection of HRP to allow, in, to allow investors to use alternative risk measures such as expected shortfall, conditional drawdown at risk, standard deviation, and equal weighting. So if we highlight how, what are the key differences from HERC uh, and HRP, we can highlight two big differences. So the first is that instead of bisecting the dendrogram structure, HERC uses the true clusters which are represented by uh, our clustering algorithm so it does not naively splits the dendrogram into uh, twos as it does in hrp and secondly the user can use other other than invariance uh, variance matrix to optimize your portfolio so we can use expected shortfall conditional drawdown at risk standard deviation and equal weighting so let's take a look at Herc algorithm in details. So on the first step, Herc algorithm uses the same tree clustering algorithm to generate asset dendrogram. On the second step, HRP deviates from HRP. Herc deviates from HRP. The first step grows the tree to its maximum depth, and now it's time to prune it by selecting the required number of clusters. Dr. Raffino uh, has used the famous gap index method for this purpose. Pruning the hierarchical tree to the optimal number of clusters not only reduces overfitting, but also helps achieve better weights allocations. So let's take a look at the uh, picture on the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, you can see the, uh, how basically the allocation is made uh, for uh, HRP algorithm. So here we have 100 weights, we split them into two parts. So 50 here and uh, 50 here. And uh, after that, this 50 goes into 25, 25, 25 to this cluster, to this part, and 25 to this part. But what we can see is that actually this one um, um, part forms a, a big and a separate distant cluster. So instead, inst instead of that, Herc algorithm will allocate 50% to this big cluster and split it into first and second asset. But after that, it will split uh, this 50% in equal weights for all assets in this cluster. In this case, there will be no overweighting for this particular um, asset because actually five, three, and four are in one uh, are, are situated in one cluster. So that's why Herc algorithm is. Uh, so it preserves the true form of dendrogram and our clustering by assigning the weights on cluster level rather than bisecting them naively. So once more here, uh, we can see that on each step, we just naively uh, split our weights into two. And that's actually how uh, HRP algorithm works uh, with the only difference is that it uses the um, inverse variance as allocation matrix. And Herc algorithm rather um, 
analyzes the clustering uh, form of our dendrogram. So here it first allocates 50% to this cluster and 50% to this cluster, but at the end it will split all the 50 weights inside, inside of this big cluster instead of just naively bisecting it. So when we have found the required number of clusters, next step calculates weights for each of them. As we have previously discussed, we can either use expected shortfall, conditional drawdown at risk, standard deviation, or equally weighted allocation between clusters. So uh, on the first step, the algorithm calculates intra-cluster weights using inverse variance approach. So uh, in the original paper of uh, her, her algorithm, the also uh, shows that the equally weighted technique works re remarkably well. And uh, on practice, it is not that uh, easy to bid this, uh, this kind of technique. So her algorithm still uses the inverse variance approach to, to define intra-cluster weights, but inside of each cluster, you can use either expected shortfall, conditional drawdown at risk, standard deviation, or equally weighted, um, equally weighted approach. So now we have discussed how Herc algorithm uh, is, uh, um, um, how Herc algorithm um, it looks like, and we can, can take a look at portfolio lab implementation of hierarchical equal risk contribution. So as you can see, hierarchical equal risk contribution algorithm is uh, also a type of clustering uh, portfolio optimization algorithms. What we can see here that we can use either variance, standard deviation, equal weighting, expected shortfall, or conditional drawdown risk as um, uh, allocation, uh, allocation matrix. And let's take a look at uh, the class. So here we, in, we initiate the hierarchical equal risk contribution and it has a parameter of confidence level. So actually, if you don't use um, expected shortfall or expected drawdown risk, this uh, parameter uh, does not need to be set by you. So it is only used if you um, apply uh, either a conditional drawdown risk or expected shortfall risk measurement. So confidence level is the confidence level alpha used for calculating expected, uh, expected shortfall and conditional drawdown at risk. So now let's take a look at the signature of allocate method. So here we still uh, have many parameters from hierarchical risk parity algorithm, which are asset names, asset prices, asset returns, your covariance matrix. We can also see a linkage here, but what we can see in um, uh, hierarchical equal risk contributions are two new parameters, which are risk measure, which uh, is a matrix which is used to uh, calculate weight allocations, which can be either equal weighting, variance, standard deviation, conditional drawdown risk, or expected shortfall, and optimal number of clusters. So in the original implementation, the, uh, um, you can either specify your own optimal number of clusters based on your, I don't know, some domain knowledge, or uh, probably you expect that uh, there, are, there is a number of industries present in your investment universe, and this can be the optimal number of clusters, or if you set this value to none, it will use the gap statistic algorithm to find the optimal number, number of clusters for uh, our article equal risk contribution algorithm. So um, as we have discussed, you can either sp specify the integer value or you can specify uh, none so that the algorithm may decide the optimal number of clusters. Actually, as we have discussed, you can plot the uh, you can plot the dendrograms in both HRP and HERC algorithm by using uh, a plot clusters um, function. So here you can also see that for our article risk contribution, we have the plot clusters um, function with, which takes asset names uh, from your investment universe as input to build a beautiful uh, to make a beautiful plot with asset names on top of that. And in this way, you can understand how the algorithm um, splits your universe into the dendrogram and understands uh, its decision process. So the same applies for hierarchical risk parity.
So our article risk parity also, also has plot clusters algorithm, which plots a dendrogram of the uh, hierarchical clusters. So let's take uh, a look at the key takeaways from the portfolio optimization lecture series. We have discussed the uh, original uh, breakthrough in uh, portfolio optimization, which is modern portfolio theory, which includes mean variance optimization and critical line algorithm. We have also, also discussed that there are several disadvantages of this algorithm, including the Markowitz curse, which means that the uh, number of data points which is used to estimate the covariance matrix is usually much smaller comparing to the number of assets in your, co in your covariance matrix. And as a result of that, your optimization solutions become unstable. We have also uh, discussed what are the different ways to measure uh, dependence between two assets, um, which can be either normalized mutual information or uh, information variation. After that, we have moved into theory applied correlation matrices and discussed three machine learning algorithms which are designed to uh, solve Markowitz curves, which are uh, nested cluster optimization, which applies k-means clustering on top of mean variance optimization and to, um, uh, and to agglomerative clustering algorithms, which are HRP, hierarchical risk parity, and her modification of HRP algorithm, which is hierarchical equal risk contribution. 